All right, so today what we're looking at, uh, kind of switching gears a little bit, but again, dealing with energy, and that's something called radioactive decay. Now, radio de uh, radioactive decay is the process by which an unstable atomic nucleus uh, loses energy. So that's why we're looking at this, by what's called radiation. Now, uh, a material containing an unstable nucleus uh, is, called, is considered radioactive. So it wants to change. Now, the three most common types of decay are alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma decay, uh, all of which involve admitting one or more particles or what's called photons. The bottom line is here in this situation is that we have a nucleus and it's unstable. And so what it does is it's shooting off these particles, which are energy. And because it's losing energy, you end up with, uh, it, it actually, because you're shooting these particles out, which are energy, your nucleus is actually changing. And so when you have a new nucleus, you got some new material. All right, so now here's the key thing is that some uh, radioactive materials are fine and some are definitely not. Now what we're going to look at is something called the half-life. And because these materials are basically decaying, they're, they're going apart, um, different materials have what's called a different half-life, and which is the required amount of time that it takes for a quantity to actually cut in half. So you might have, say, 100 grams of a material, but as it's decaying and shooting off these particles, it, uh, is, it is shrinking. And so what you can look at is the rate at which these new objects or new materials are shrinking at. Now, big thing here, applications of half-lives is not only the decay of radioactive material, but also something like the reduction of a bacteria, culture, or and virus, oddly enough, uh, because this is... Well, this is a note I wrote many, many years ago, but uh, a virus, something they would look at now is the cases of uh, COVID uh, half-life, the daily cases. How long is it taking for the cases to cut in half? And that is could be an indicator of how well we are doing at fighting the virus. Now, we have a couple of formulas. All right, so the first formula here is about half-life which is just, I uh, use a big capital H here for half-life. And you can, it's this nice simple formula, somewhat anyways, where you have how much time has gone by, so your time elapsed, uh, is divided by the number of times the quantity actually cut in half. So you've got to count how many times it cut in half. All right, now, when you figure that out, we're going to further use another formula. So as you see, H is in this formula. So sometimes you have to find H to plug into our formula here, where we have N is equal to N, and you see a little zero down there, uh, times 0 0.5 to the power of T over H, where N is the final amount of the material you have. N naught, as it's called, the little N zero there, is the starting amount. And again, H is our half-life, and T is our time elapsed. All right, so I'm going to go through how we are going to use these two formulas uh, to solve a type of questions. So, for example, here's a radioactive material called radon. And so there is 200 grams of radon. And 12 days later, there's 12 and a half grams. All right. So what is the half-life of radon? So what I'm going to use is that first formula that I had where we have H half-life is equal to uh, our time, so I'll put a big capital T there, divided by the number of times the material halved, or the number of number times uh, radon halved. It's kind of a word formula in that case, radon halved. Halved, there we go. All right, now, Here's the thing is H equals, well, I know how much time went by. Here it is right here, 12 days. I'll put that down there. Now the key is how many times did it have? I had 200 and now I have 12 and a half grams. Well, here's what we do. I write down 200 and I just keep cutting it in half. So 200, 
Well, I cut down in half, it's 100. Or divide by two, I take 100 and cut it in half. Or divide by two, I get 50. I take 50 and cut it in half, I get 25. 25 I cut in half, and guess what? I get 12.5. And so, how many times is it cut in half? I look at the jumps. One, two, three, four times this object or this material cut in half. So, there's my four right there. So when I look at 12 days divided by four, well, 12 divided by four is three, and our units are days. Now, the thing with half-lives is you can have uh, half-lives in years, seconds, minutes. Uh, there, there can be any time, uh, any amount of time is up for grabs, so you gotta watch your units here. Now, here's something, is that uh, how much radon is left after 18 days. Now, sometimes with these questions, there is a, what I would call a straightforward way of doing it, and some sometimes there isn't. And the way to figure that out is, is your number of days divisible by your half-life? Nicely. And can I divide 18 by three? Nicely? Yeah, I can, because 18 divided by three is six. So what I can do is, I take what my information that I have over here that I figured out the number of times and I keep going. And so I can look here is that 200 is the start. You know what? I'm going to redo this. So 200, that's the start. Let's put that down. That's what we started with. Now, when I move this over. So that's, whoops, all right, hold on here. All right, start is 200. Now, I half it and I get to 100. That is after now three days because the half-life is three days. I get to 50, well, that would be after another three days, so six days later. Half of 50 is 25. Another three days, which would mean in total nine days later. So I'm trying to get to 18 here. I want to see what number I end up with. Again, we look at half of 25 uh, is 29 or 12.5. That would be 12 days later. I keep adding three on the days, but yet dividing my amount by two. Now, uh, I need my calculator here. I take 12 and a half and divide it by two. I get 6.25. And again, that would be 15 days later. And now here comes our answer. Because I take 6.25, uh, divide it in half, uh, around two decimal places, I get 3.13, and again, that is after 18 days. And so, here's my answer right here. How much radon is left after 18 days? 3.13 days. So again, what I did with the days was I just kept adding three because that's the half-life. And with the amount, well, because I'm talking about half-life, I just kept cutting it in half until I got my answer. Now, here's a different situation. Is how much radon is left after 40 days? Now, 40 divided by three is, let's see here, uh, it's 13.33. Well, this isn't going to work for me anymore. I'm not going to be able to do it this way. So what I'm going to use is the formula, the other formula we had, where we have N is equal to N naught, which is called, or the start, uh, times 0 0.5 and to the power of T divided by H. All right. So what I'm looking for here is N. I want to know the final amount after 14, 40 days. My N naught, N O, uh, we'll go with N O, uh, the starting amount. Well, we start off with 200 grams. All right, now, how much time has gone by? Well, we're looking at 40 days. And again, the half life we found for this material is three days. All right, so I'm going to substitute in my information here into my formula. And so I have uh, 
N, that's what we're trying to figure out here, the final amount, uh, N naught, the starting amount is 200. Then I have uh, 0 0.5 here, but to the power of uh, 40 is our T, our half-life is 3. Now, because we're dividing the T and the H, they always have to be in the same units, all right? So if these are both in days, we're good. If it was years, they'd have to both be in years. But either way, they both have to be in the same units. Now, following Bedmiss, I have N. Now, I have to figure out my exponent here first. And uh, 40 divided by 3 is actually, uh, let's see here, 13.33, two decimal places. All right, so I figured that out. Now, the reason I did that is so I could actually figure out the exponent. And so I'm going to, because again, I got to follow Bedmas here, got to do the exponent first. Most common mistake I see students do is uh, do 200 times 0.5. You can't do that. You got to do the exponent first. So I take 0.5 and uh, to the power of 13.33, and I get 0. 0.12340097. All right, and then I can finally take that number, times it by 200, and I get zero. I'm going to go to the first two non-zero numbers, 0 0.19, and we're talking about grams. So that's how much material we have left. And again, the reason I couldn't do it this straightforward way is because 40 was not divisible by 3, nicely. Uh, now, oh, here's one. Uh, how much radon? So we got a new same situation here. How much radon is uh, left after 18 hours? Okay, so again, I'm going to use my formula because 18 hours definitely not divisible by uh, three days. All right, so I'm going to use my n again is equal to n naught times my 0.5. All right, to the power of T over H. So a lot of these values are the same. The what's different is how much time's gone by. So again, our uh, N is equal to, uh, we don't know, uh, N naught. Again, is we're still starting off with 200 grams here. All right, now the time elapsed is uh, 18 hours. Now, I'm going to switch that into days because my half-life in days, and it has to be in the same units. So I'm going to stick with, uh, let's go with days. Uh, and so I take 18 divided by 24, and I get uh, 0 0.75 days. Now, again, as I mentioned, my half-life, still, we already figured that one out, three days, same material. All right, so now, again, I'm going to substitute into my formula. All right, so I have my N is equal to, again, my N naught is still 200 grams. All right, so then we have 0.5 to the power of T over H. So my T, again, make sure I get them right, is 0.75. And my H is 3. Again, this is all an exponent that I got to figure out. All right, so then again, just following Bedmas. So we got 200 here. That's going to be the last thing we're going to worry about. All right, I'm going to figure out what my exponent is here. So I get 0.75 uh, divided by 3. Oh, 0.25. All right, and again, I have an exponent. That's what I want to do now. So I'm going to take that. Let's see, I'm going to write it in here. So I'm going to take my 0.5. Well, I got my 200 here first. Times my 0.5 to the power of 0.25. And I get, uh, again, to two decimal places, 0 0.84. And then so finally, a leftover amount. Now, again, the half-life is three days. And then we're only talking about 18 hours has gone by, so it's got to be more than half. And, of course, if I take 200 and I multiply by 0.84, I end up with 168 grams. And there we go. So again, there's one formula there to find half-lives, right? And you have to, again, be able to work down counting how many times you cut the something in half, 
Sometimes you can use that to find different final amounts, but often because the odds of your amount of time, your time elapsed being able to be divided by your half life is slim to none, you're probably gonna have to use the formula. But again, I just wanted to show you the couple different ways there that we can uh, look at radioactive decay, which again is a, a nucleus shooting off energy and changing because it's shoot losing energy, it's changing into a, a new, uh, new material. All right, so 